Sassy Jack Stitchery. It's definitely been a little while since we've talked on our own, and um, I hope you've missed me. <laughs> so, I've missed doing this a little bit. I There's so many things I want to share with you and tell you about. And I did one video, and then I didn't get it published, and now I'm like, uh, that's not a good one. So I want to do it again. Um, so it is kind of weird. I'll admit to sit here and talk to you by myself. I like to have a little partner, but um but anyway it's okay i've got you out there i know you're listening and hopefully you'll enjoy it but today there are a number of things that i want to share with you um we just finished up our class retreat schedule for the year we start in april or may and we go all the way through the summer and into the early fall and we have um you know designers come in who uh you know bring projects in for us and we do pretty big retreats and um, we finished up October. We had a 70-person retreat the first weekend in October with Claudia Dutcher Kissler, Dutch Treat Designs, and the topic was Bristol Orphanage Samplers. So thank you so much, Claudia, for doing that. Um, I've known Claudia for maybe going on 10 years, and she's she, I love her. She's just a really genuine person and um, and a wealth of knowledge. And if you didn't get to come to the class and you haven't had a chance to meet Claudia or don't know much about her, there's a fiber talk that got published um, Sunday about her. And I guess today is November the 4th, maybe? Today's the 4th. So it came out on the 5th. Um, so if you pull up that fiber talk with Gary Parr, you can get to know Claudia a little bit and you will love her too. She's very contagious and her love for needlework and samplers is also very contagious. So um, it was just such a privilege to have her here. And, and I know so many of you got to enjoy it. And I will be honest with you, I was losing some sleep over having that many students um, here. And this class was as much lecture as it was stitching. And so for that reason, we were able to do a pretty large group. But, you know, I ask a lot of questions and a lot of people I trust and know will tell me the truth. And they all said to a person that, you know, they were comfortable and it worked out and it was great. So, um, so thank you guys for taking a chance that came on a 70 person class. I felt like it worked out really well. I think it was reasonably spacious and everybody was able to move around and do what they needed to do. Having said that, we won't be doing those big classes for all things because, um, you know, a technical stitch, you really need to have your things about you and have your little home away from home nest, your nest that you carry with you, like a little bird, you pack it up in a little rucksack and you, you take it with you and you need to have those things to have a good stitch time um, away from home. And so, you know, we won't be doing 70 person classes all the time. Um, that was a rarity and maybe the only time we'll ever do that. We'll see how it goes. It would have to be really a, a lecture as much as um, a, a handwork class to make that work. Um, but that one was fabulous and everybody I think had a good time and we had a good time. So thanks to everybody who came and participated. And thanks for all the videos and the feedback and the pictures. It's always fun to see through other people's eyes what it felt like and so I appreciate that and um, especially big thanks to Claudia and um, then then we went on we had two and a half weeks later three weeks later we had um, Isabel of the primitive hair come in and we had a big Halloween retreat and if you know the origin story about the name Sassy Jack Stitcher you know that the Jacks comes from the Jacks of Halloween that's one part of it another part of it is a sweet little cat that I had who um, who I named Jack and then took the vet and found out she was a girl. And so we named her Sassafras Jack and called her Sassy Jack. And uh, she was with us for 19 years. She just passed away earlier this year. So we were sad to, to see her go. It, it hurt my heart quite a lot. But um, I will see her again one day. I know with all my little pets. That's my vision of heaven is that I'll get there and they'll all be there. And they'll all be able to talk. And they'll have all kinds of stories to tell me. And anyway, it'll be fun. So we um, also named it after the little cat, but we named it after our love of Halloween and jack o lanterns and Jacks. So that's where the Jacks of Sassy Jacks comes from. So that was right in our wheelhouse was to have a big Halloween retreat. And everybody was great who came. We had a pretty good turnout for it and people wore their, their hats and some people, we had a little costume party and it was just a whole lot of fun. And Isabel's always great. She always does some fun designs. So it was always, it's always a pleasure to have her here. That was the first time she's taught here. She's been here before, but we really enjoyed having her, and it won't be the last time. We're working on getting her back on the schedule, so we're, we're happy about that. Finishing up all that stuff, though, for the year lines us up for the winter, um, and we don't do retreats here in the wintertime. I did that the first year, and it just, gosh, it cost me so much sleep. 
and it brought me so much stress because of the weather. The weather here is so unpredictable. If you've ever lived in North Carolina, you know from whence I speak. Um, we literally can be 70, day, 70 degrees here one day and, you know, in the teens the next day. Um, and we do, you know, usually have notice. We know it's coming, but, oh, my gosh, the changes that can happen here. And so um, after the first year, we decided not to do um, retreats in the winter anymore. Um, the first year, we actually... We, we launched our shop in 2014 um, as an answer to my local stitchers. I was living in Raleigh at the time who just, we were, we needed a shop. All of our shops had closed in 2008 um, or so, and we didn't have a shop. And so by 2014, we were pretty desperate. And my friends knew I wanted to do it one day. And so they said, please, let's just do it. We'll help you. And so they did help me and they were great. And we opened um, in my house. We ran our little shop there for about a year, and then, of course, I moved. I moved to St. Croix for a couple of years on my way back home to Asheville, and so I took the shop online, but that's where it um, originated, and then when we got to Asheville, we were ready to truly launch a brick and mortar. The first day, we had a 46-person class with Susan Greening Davis, and um, we did that at um, my local church, which was so generous to let us use their gymnasium, which was fabulous, and so... Um, this shop has always been a teaching shop and a learning shop, and that was my mission when I launched it, um, and it is still my mission, and uh, I appreciate all the ideas and all the support and all the people who come out to the classes, um, and so this winter, we're going to carry that tradition another step forward, and we're going to do some online learning, and that's how we'll spend our winter going forward. So we'll do retreats in the summer, in the spring, in the fall, and then when we get to the questionable weather, we're going to drop back and we're going to do um, online learning. And I think that really speaks to the other mission of this shop as I created it, which was community building um, and accessibility. And so I really want all of you out there who want to be a part of our family to be able to be a part of our family. And that doesn't mean that you have to travel here and come through our doors to do it. You should be able to you know, watch some videos, get with us online, you know, whatever you need to do and, and feel like you're part of this community and a part of the bigger stitching community, really, which we are also a huge supporter of and a part of. This is not just about Sassy Jacks. This is about, you know, needlework and the bond that it brings to us all. And so I just appreciate the support for that. So this winter, we're going to start that off with two things. One of them is... Um, a specialty stitch sampler which my local stitchers have been asking me to do for quite a while and a lot of you know that we do have a lot of banding um, we are as we said on self fixing to get ready <laughs> to go on another little trip to buy some more banding um, this winter but we do usually have quite a bit of banding from Volpa and Hollenbeck and Wuppertal which they make the most beautiful banding in the world and so we love them and it's a family-run business and we're just so pleased to be in partnership with them to bring you their banding um, so we want to do a specialty stitch sampler, um, using the banding, and then we are going to use a new book that another friend of mine, Jeanette Douglas of Jeanette Douglas Designs, published earlier this year, and she brought it out at the Nashville Needlework Market, and, and I love it. I love it. It's perfect for what we want to do. The size of everything is perfect. She's already sent us um, tons of books for you guys. It'll all be online probably by the time you see this video. You can start signing up for this and joining in with us on this. So the book that you need is called Learning Stitch a Sampler. And it is by Jeanette Douglas. And if you have this book, that's great. Then all you need is the banding. Or if you want to use a piece of linen, you can do that too. And you just need to sign up and be part of our classroom. And so I'll be setting the classroom up in the next couple of weeks, and you'll get some notification about that probably on Facebook, or I'll do another little video and give you a walkthrough on how to get there. Um, but it will be online learning. There won't be any teaching fee involved at all. You just need to have your supplies. So you'll need to have this book or buy this book from us. Um, if you buy it from us, if you don't have it yet, and you buy the book from us, we're going to um, give you the opportunity to kit it up with some banding. And so there's lots of different size banding that'll work. This is actually a different uh, width than the width that's used for the eye stitch sampler. So, um, you know, don't get confused about what you've got. You can use the eye stitch sampler width banding for this project, but you can't use this for the eye stitch sampler. And I will make sure that that is well noted on the 
the description of the product. This is too narrow to use for the eye stitch sampler. We do have some that'll work for that. And the eye stitch sampler is um, a Carol Ridyard group of samplers and they are gorgeous. And I love Carol. And if you haven't done one of hers, please jump out there and do that. They're great. They are just beautiful and lots of people have done them. And I have one in, in progress myself. And she's coming out with a new one in January too. So um, we supply a lot of the banding for that. And so if you guys are interested in that and you don't have it yet, feel free to give us a call. But just note that this stuff is a little more narrow. But um, we've got lots of different banding that's going to be perfect to do this on. And so each of these little boxes here represents a, a type of specialty stitch. And they're also very similar to, um, um, uh, I can't think of the name of it now. There's a type of sampler and I have a number of them, darning samplers. These stitches look like darning stitches. Um, and so I will use this chance to share some just stunning darning samplers with you. I've got two in my collection that are just amazing. Um, and so those, those guys will get to come out and, and see the light of day and play with you a little bit too. Um, but if you decide to do this with us, the idea is that you would, you know, learn the specialty stitches. I'll teach you. We'll learn it together with Jeanette's instructions. You'll, you'll do your little specialty stitches on this, um, banding. I'll give you some extra things that'll go at the top and the bottom that will, you know, help you mark it as part of our group if you want to do that, um, where you learned it and stuff and, and your name and all that good stuff. And at the end of it, you can choose to you know, roll it up and keep it. You might want to put it on a spool. We're working on some options for spools. Um, we'll bring some more information about that to you a little bit later on because you won't need it until the end. But we're working through this whole spool thing and trying to figure that out. You know, once you get your banding, you'll have the measurement of it. And if you like to go antiquing, you might find an antique spool that'll work for you too. And that would be just perfect if you can do that. If not, we'll try to figure out some options for some modern spools. This is all 28 count linen, <clears throat> 28 count banding. And you will need to do this sampler on linen um, it or even weave linen. If, if you think of Lagana and Chobelin as even weave and then you could do a nun stitch or something on the edge. It won't work on eight o'clock, this one won't because of the type of stitches. They really need the threads so that you can do the stitches over the threads. So that's coming, I hope you like that. The other one is something that a lot of you may maybe haven't heard of, and it's called Schwalm work. And it's really neat and very different, and I think you'll love it. It is a little bit akin to, um, if you've ever done any needlepoint, you know what a diaper um, sampler is. It's, um, it's a filling stitch, basically. And they're beautiful, and they're done in all kinds of different flavors, for lack of a better word, all kinds of different filling stitches. Um, but I've studied three times in Germany um, with um, a wonderful woman uh, whose name I'm struggling with right now. I don't remember her first name. I can't remember her last name. That's terrible. I'll come back to that. Um, and uh, Lizina Happel. That's it. <laughs> I've got two friends in Germany, and they were both popping in my head at the same time. So I'm sorry, Lizina. But I studied three times with Lazina, and the first class is the one that we're going to do this winter, and it's called Happel Hearts. And it's just beautiful, and it's a very forgiving type of um, needlework. It's white on white, and it's schwalm work, and um, you'll end up with a really beautiful heart at the end. Um, we will show you how to finish it, or you can send it to us, and we'll finish it in our batch of finishing that we do. Um, or you can come and join us. We're going to have a little day where we uh, do some of the finishing together. So you could come and join us and do that. And that'll be, you know, toward the early spring when we actually get to that point of, of finishing up those hearts. When I did it in Germany, it was probably um, start to finish a full two and a half days of stitching. And so we will um, spread that out over the late winter and give you a chance to get yours finished, you know, and um, and then we'll have that finishing day. And the finishing is pretty neat, pretty interesting, and I don't want to tell you about it because it might scare you off, and we all like a surprise. <laughs> so, so I'll save that. But be thinking about that. You'll see some pictures up for it and some class sign up. And again, that one will be in a, a little classroom. We'll set up a learning classroom to do that in, and it'll just be fun. Um, and we have the books from Lazina that we'll be using for that. So. The cost of that, you know, you will have to pay for your book and your threads and your fabric. Um, 
for Jeanette's class, you're going to be using, you really should just be using for your sampler that you do on the banding, you should just be using, you know, scrap threads that you've got, things from your stash, I think would be the right way to do that. So the banding's really minimal. Your cost on that's going to be in the book, and you use threads from stash. Now, if you decide if when you want to do the, if there is a sampler at the end of that that you can do, uh, a full sampler, it folds out from the back of the book. And if you decide you want to do that, you might decide to jump over and use the recommended silks um, or threads to do that. And uh, we may have a few other tricks up our sleeve for some little projects to come in with Jeanette's. And I jump back and forth there, but ADD and uh, OCD kind of go together in shop ownership a little bit. Although the OCD part's failing me a little bit. <laughs> The ADD, um, I can run with the Giants now. So, um, anyway, those two projects are coming up this winter, and I hope that you'll join in one or both of those with us and just really have fun. They are, there again, there's no teaching fee involved in that. This is really about me sharing what I know with you because I've had the privilege to do a lot of travel and to learn from some really fabulous needlewomen, some of whom are gone now. Um, and the best homage I can give to any of them is to carry this on to the best of my ability, which means I will, I'm not a master at anything, um, but I will teach you what I know, and maybe you'll be the master when you're done. Um, but at a minimum, you'll know how to do it, and you'll be able to teach somebody else if you want to, which would be great. So that's what's coming this winter, so hang tight for that. Take a look on the website, and you'll find some of that stuff, and I'll try to put it in the links after this video, too. But there's been a lot of other fun stuff going on. So we actually have a new sampler that we came out with. It's an original design. And um, I came to Allie. This was last year we started this. And I walked in and I said, <clears throat> hey, Allie. And that's how those conversations always start. And she cringes when I do that. I have to have a little drink. My throat's getting dry. You'll notice that this is not Mountain Dew. <laughs> not because I don't love Mountain Dew. This is Sierra Mist, and it's even caffeine-free, which I find that disturbing. That seems rather pointless, but that aside, uh, that's, an, that's an upgrade from, uh, from Mountain Dew for me, trying to cut back a little bit. Um, so, I said, hey, Allie, you know that poem, Bull and Bubble, Twill and Trouble? And she goes, yeah. And I said, let's do a design with that. And so, the idea is that we took that poem and we broke, and that poem is from Macbeth, which is a Scottish play. And we broke it out into four parts. And then Miss Allie set off and she designed some original design for each of those four parts. But there's a little sweetness in there. So each of the four parts, we also created a um, original design, true band sampler. Another little sampler, not really a band sampler, another little sampler that if you collected all four parts, you have the pieces to do that also from Macbeth. And the neat thing about this original design <coughs> is that... Um, she designed, and the first one is the finny snake, and if you know what a finny snake is, please let me know, because I don't know what that is, but um, he's boiled and baked now, so it's okay. <laughs> and uh, we took the borders from our Scottish samplers. We actually have a lot of Sc Scottish samplers in our collection, and so we pulled a different border for each of the four parts, and we changed the colors to it, but we charted it exactly, and we changed the colors to it so that it would fit with our spooky Shakespeare motif, um, ideas and so this is called Spooky Shakespeare and this is the first one fillet, fillet of a finny snake and um, it's really cool and on the back it has that um, freebie part um, and if you collect it all four you could put that one together at the end too so we hope you love it um, some people have it because we've had it for sale for a little while we got it right before um, the primitive hair retreat and we'll have it on the website by the time you see this. It is a Sassafras Samplers um, original design. We're pretty stoked about it. All four parts are done. They're all completely charted. I mentioned that we started working on this last year. Um, we just have to finish our models for them. But we'll be publishing those between now and the end of the year is the plan. So by the time you get to the end of the year, you could have collected all four charts. I don't expect you to have them all stitched, but you could. And that would be great. <clears throat> um, and then, you know... I'm a, I'm a Halloween girl all year long kind of girl, and you might be too, and this is not necessarily Halloween. It really is more uh, just fun with Macbeth and Shakespeare and 
you could change these colors to some over dyes if you don't like these you know kind of primary colors we liked it we really wanted to do something that would appeal to a demographic that is not a sampler demographic um, but would you know give them an opportunity to learn something about a little bit about samplers and history and um, and this you know the freebie that comes with it if you collect all four pieces is truly more of a sampler and so we just wanted to give a kind of a gateway drug <laughs> to, to, to that demographic um, because you know the Scottish play if you know anything about theater which I've never been in theater but um, I've gone to a number of plays nobody in theater says Macbeth because it's supposed to be saying the name of that play brings bad things to the actors and stuff in their performances and so um, the Scottish play so it's called Spooky Shakespeare um, and I don't even know if it even says Macbeth anywhere it probably does on the back uh, when we talk about it but for those of you in theater you'll appreciate that and you know I, I want to point out that when you look at our charts and we have Allie to thank for this they all have some cool graphics in the background and she's really good at going out and finding um, these cool graphics that we can put in the background. They're all pretty special and they're all kind of related somehow to the topic of the sampler. Um, the one for Mary Poppins, I think, had the, a background of um, the London Underground or something like that. So, you know, it's not just color. There's some interesting stuff in there. So, um, anyway, that's just a fun tidbit. But... I hope you like this one. We love it. I want to show you the um, model for it. <clears throat> so, this is Fillet of a Finny Snake. And, you know, I should be playing that little song from Harry Potter in the background because that's what makes me think about these. I love um, the little Harry Potter tune that's set to that Macbeth poem. Um, so, anyway, I hope you enjoy that. We did have it done in time for Halloween. I just didn't get this video out there, but... You know, it's Halloween all year long at Sassy Jack. So, you guys enjoy Spooky Shakespeare and enjoy the other parts that come out. And I hope you enjoy the quick little stitch. It is stitched on a Weeks Dye Works um, linen, Weeks Tin Roof. And these colors are all DMC. But like I said, if you really wanted to change it up a little bit, you could easily pull some over dyes out of your stash. It doesn't take a lot of thread, so you can pull out of your stash something for that. Um, I talked a lot about Claudia's um class here and if you listen to her fiber talk you'll learn a lot more about claudia she's just a, a really cool fun neat person um one of her passions along with bristol orphanage samplers is perforated paper and if you have been following us for you know since we started our newsletters which really hasn't been that long ago but <clears throat> our first newsletter contained a perforated paper design that was free and it's still out there free we would love for you to stitch it um, and I'm going to show it to you but first I'm going to show you one of Claudia's this is one of the um, motto samplers and it's done it's done on perforated paper and it's just beautiful I'll show it to you and this one's really popular in the shop and if you notice it's kind of shiny back there well if you look at Claudia's um, if you look at Claudia's verbiage in her charts or on her website she'll tell you that in the victorian times um perforated paper which if i if i'm i might be right about this i might not i think i'm right um they they came into popularity in the mid 1800s until about the early 1900s kind of dropped out of vogue and then started coming back around the 1970s or so and i believe i can quote claudia with that i think that's what she mentioned in her fiber talk <clears throat> um but uh, they, they've been around for a long time. They're quite beautiful. And some of them, if they were like that motto sampler, Home Sweet Home, and there's some other ones that Claudia has done. That's one of Claudia's designs, which we do have um, in stock. And there's another one that I love called Kind Words. Um, and I, I really love that one. I think I've started stitching that one even. Um, they were often had foil behind them to give them that shine. And so when we took this to our framer, we had them put um, like a bronze-colored acid-free mat board behind it. And um, that's what gives it that dimension 
in that kind of cool metallic look to it behind the paper. You can almost see it back there. And it is just beautiful. And Allie Dudley did stitch this one for us. <clears throat> and Studio B, who's up the street from us, framed it. They're fantastic framers. Um, so, you know, I love that one, and I love all of Claudia's stuff. But if you decide to stitch, um, you know, one of those, that's something really fun to think about. We, you know, we didn't want to put full behind it. You could have, but we did. Because if you go to your framer, they'll give you all kinds of choices of the uh, metallic acid-free mat boards. And you do want to do acid-free behind it. Um, and then this is just so cool, especially in today's fashion where people are trying to bring, you know, a little bit of tradition back into a modern household. That's just a beautiful way to do it. So I encourage you to take a look at, you know, what we have available online from Claudia's portfolio um, or from, you know, Claudia's websites as well just some really fun beautiful stuff out there that one was stitched with watercolors from karen collection and so it's a variegated floss or variegated um cotton fiber it's not floss it's thicker than floss so it's about the size of a pearl and there might be a pearl in there as well you know we've kitted this for a lot of people and we've used um we've used the karen collection stuff we've also used weeks dye works and gotten a real similar look to it weeks dye works pearls um, which we do carry their full line of that, which is just fun. It's all variegated, really beautiful stuff. So, um, you know, you can change the colors of that to match your own decor. If you don't like the blue, you can change it to something else. And there's some good options out there for you. Um, so that's a really beautiful one. Now, when we started our newsletter, again, you know, I mentioned earlier that one of my goals for the shop was <clears throat> to build community. And uh, some of you probably know this, but for those of you that don't, the first... The first little giveaway that we did was actually a perforated paper sampler. And there's a there's an antique here in the shop. It's an old drafting table, and we found it at a local antique shop, and I loved it. And I was standing there looking at it, trying to figure out if it would fit in my car, when I just happened to notice what was hanging on the wall beside it, and it was a beautiful little perforated paper sampler. And um, I'm going to read it to you first, and then I'll show it to you. It says, Though oceans wide between us roar, though distant be our lot, Though should I never see thee more, dear friend, forget me not. And we just thought that this was just the perfect, um, it's a lot of glare because of the glass on it. We just thought that this was just the perfect, um, you know, thing to start our newsletter with. So our first newsletter has this chart in there. So if you want to stitch this, you can go pull it up. And you'll notice that, I don't know how well you can see it, but this perforated paper is tiny relative to what we have available today and this sampler is 1849 is when this was stitched and i know our friends at new work press are working to get a modern version of this perforated paper developed for us so that we can have a little bit higher account um this is how i know it was 1849 so it's still got the original inscription on the back from one friend to another and it's just beautiful paper and so this little ratty looking gold frame on the inside that's the original frame and that's how i found it and i had it reframed inside this so that we could preserve it i cannot take it off of its original frame or i will lose this water this beautiful handmade paper on the back um 1849 and i haven't done the research yet to figure out if either of these women are local but it's two women eliza rowley and mary elizabeth um mathis i believe so just just a fantastic um, piece of love out of history from one friend to another who were clearly separated by geographic boundaries. So, <clears throat> and then I've been privileged to see some other really beautiful perforated paper. If you look back into that first newsletter, I think we had an example of it in there. Um, my other friend in Germany, Lorraine Moots, and that's why I was getting tongue-tied earlier, has a collection of just incredible samplers, and one of them is well, more than one, a few perforated paper samplers in there, but one that I remembered is kind of multiple tiered. And so it's built up with several different um, layers of paper and it's just stunning. So, um, you know, perforated paper has a rich, long, fabulous history. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just plain samplers. It was some very intricate, beautiful samplers that were done on perforated paper. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you and thank Claudia for all that she does to promote 
um, perforated paper and now needlework press as well. I think um, between those two women, they own a lot of the perforated paper samplers. And then I know Lorraine Mutes has a few too that are just stunning. So if you ever have a chance to see one in person beyond, you know, this one hanging here in the shop, which hangs behind our register, um, you know, definitely take, take the time to look at those. If you ever come across them, they're just beautiful, beautiful pieces of art. So that's been a really fun thing that's happened. Um, another fun thing that's happened, which a lot of you are already, already busy stitching on, is this beautiful new sampler from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And this is Ann Roberts, and this is the model. Now, you'll see, I don't know how good your screen is, but this sampler costs for straw. We've kitted it in parchment because this fabric is an early dye lot of straw, and it's really close to parchment. It's nowhere near as dark as today's straw, which today's straw is beautiful. It's a great substitute for sanding from Lakeside Linen. But um, this particular color is very close to today's parchment from Weeks Dye Works Wire. And if you decide you want to stitch Ann, um, we're happy to kit it up for you. This model hangs here in the shop. It's gorgeous. We, we love it. Um, so thank you, Nicola, for letting us um, hang on to it for you. Um, but uh, it's a Welsh sampler, so it's it's just beautiful and i understand from nicola that this building that's depicted still stands in wells so i think that's fantastic so that's a really beautiful sampler and then our friend michelle um who owns this company mill on the floss samplers just launched a new sampler called sarah ellis and so um this is another beautiful beautiful sampler and I will show you the model. <laughs> it's good to have good friends who, um, who reproduce samplers. So the model for this is just stunning. And uh, this is the model. Oh, we have got a lot of glare again. Sorry about that. I'll try to get it as much out of there as I can. How beautiful is that? 1823, aged 11 years old. Just so pretty. All the colors are just stunning. So, I love the border on it, too. So, this model will hang here in the shop for you. Um, I'll tell you what it says. There is a day belongs to God alone. He chooses Sunday for his own, and we must neither work nor play because it is the Sabbath day. That's what the verse says. And it's got really sweet little, I think they are puppy dogs down at the bottom, but they're all different colors. And um, you can tell that the little girl that stitched this just really enjoyed it. Lots of pretty colors in it. It's got some satin stitch, and it looks like the rest of it is cross stitch. So it will be a great smallish sampler for somebody who's just... Um, you know, feeling their way through the world of samplers and not really used to specialty stitches yet. So I'll show it to you again. Just beautiful. So that's that one. I think I've rambled quite a long time. <laughs> so one other thing I will tell you, um, we'll be doing another video, maybe this afternoon, maybe today, and I don't know, we'll get it published pretty soon about punch needle. Our punch needle teacher, we, we got a new punch needle teacher and we love her. She's local to us and um, she is just fantastic. We were her shop when she learned to um, do punch needles. She just came in and picked it up on her own and went to town and she's excellent, excellent at it. And so I'm just so privileged to have her be teaching for us, but she's finished class curriculum for the beginners and the intermediate classes. We've been trying to get our punch needles back in stock, so those are on their way. And we've got class schedule coming up for this month. Um, the middle of the month will be the introductory class. And then the, we're, we'll schedule the intermediate class after that. So I think we'll get her to sit down and do a little chat with us and, and see the models for that. So if you're interested at all in punch needle and you think you can make it to us, we'll keep teaching. It won't just be these two times. We'll keep teaching. I think she'll, she'll enjoy it. Um, I think you'll enjoy it too. But it would be great to plan a trip to come visit us when you know you can take her class as well. Um, very affordable class is always here. So anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a fabulous week. And thank you again for watching. And thank you for subscribing. 
Thank you for all the kind comments. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to, that would be fantastic. We would appreciate it. Um, and just thank you for loving on us. I mean, it means a lot to us. I know that we're a young shop and we're getting our feet underneath us and we're learning and growing and we just appreciate all the support um, and all the encouragement. So thank you very much for watching Yonder Ways and for supporting Sassy Jack's Stitchery. I hope you guys have a great fall and a great winter as it's coming on pretty quick here. It's cold today. Bye. Thank you for watching. See you again soon. Bye.